Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a real joy for me to be able to be with you in this way on this day during this time of pandemic. Our national office is closed and I have been working from home. It's easy to feel isolated and dislocated from the church that I am called to serve. And yet, I've joined in three different Synod Council meetings by Zoom, and I've joined congregations from each one of the Synods in worship on Sundays. The Synod bishops and I are meeting more frequently than ever, and so are the Synodical and National Treasurers. In many ways, I feel more connected to the Church at this time than I usually do and it may last for a lot longer than any of us had hoped for. But there, there is also no doubt that we are still a church called to follow the way of Jesus and participate in God's mission to love and save the world. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus reminds us that if we love him, we need to keep his commandments, to love God with all our heart and soul and strength and mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. If you were like me, then you probably have days when it seems pretty easy to follow this directive, and then there are days that it seems a lot harder. In this time of pandemic, it's easy for me to have days when I get so anxious and worried that all I can think about is myself. But there are other days, and thank God more of them, where I am far more concerned with those who are working on the front lines, for those who are mourning people who have died from COVID-19, for refugees living in camps with poor sanitary conditions, for homeless people in Canada and around the world, for those living on reserves with boil water advisories, and so on, and so on. And although I'm not able to do very much hands-on to make a difference, I increase my prayers and I increase my donations. The wonderful thing is that Jesus does not just ask us to follow his commandments and then abandon us. Jesus promises to not leave us orphaned. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus promises to send us an advocate to help and guide us in the ways of truth. This is, of course, the coming of the Holy Spirit that we will celebrate in two weeks' time on Pentecost Sunday. Although today's Gospel lesson comes before Jesus' crucifixion and death, it is very similar to the messages of assurance that Jesus gives us in his post-resurrection appearances. God is with us. Jesus is with us. The Spirit is with us. We are not alone. As Paul reminds us in the reading from Acts, in God we live and move and have our being. In my lifetime, I have never experienced such a time as this. Prolonged isolation, churches closed, the loss of many leisure activities, my work life totally restructured. For those who are working on the front line, there is the real and present danger of becoming sick or dying. For many people, there have been the loss of jobs. For many others, there are great financial worries. We can keep in touch with each other, with loved ones, by telephone or by a number of social media means, but it's not the same as being together. It's definitely not the same as being able to give and to receive a hug. There are two kinds of natural responses we can experience in such disorienting times. The first is to feel the absence of God, to ask where God is, to blame God for the pandemic, to ask why our prayers are not being answered. Or is that there is the opposite response to feel more closely the presence of God. If you are in the former camp, I totally understand it, but please know that God has not abandoned you. God is with you. However, I'm finding I'm firmly in the latter camp. I'm finding with fewer options of things to do and with a much more regular daily rhythm to my life, 
that it's easier to have a regular and increased prayer and devotional life. I've been choosing a hymn each day and writing a prayer to go along with the hymn and encouraging to join me in both the singing and the praying. I sing the hymn most days and post it to social media. But while I'm singing and praying, I am so aware of God's presence with me. When I go out for my daily walk, I have been so aware of God's presence in wind and snow and flooding and the slow, slow greeting of a late prairie spring. I am so aware of God's presence with me when I get an unexpected call from a friend who is checking in on me, and in the smiles of grocery checkout clerks, and in the kindness of people politely taking turns and keeping appropriate physical distancing, whether it's in the grocery store or in the park. My favorite prayer is, O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. These are challenging times, and there are unknown endings. But God is with us. Take courage in God's presence in your life and rest securely in God's love. We will be changed by this experience, but we will still be a church willing to serve God. God bless you today and every day. Amen.